Please meet Mrs. K. She came to the Clinic of Periodontology in Bern University two and a half years ago. She's 57 years old and healthy. She went through an extensive dental treatment involving extractions of all upper and some of the lower teeth, immediate implantation, and cemented implant bridge. Mrs. K complained about severe pain. She expressed deep concern about the fate of implants and stressed that she has a limited budget. 3. Intraoral Examination In the intraoral examination, we could observe the massive overgrowth around the peri-implant mucosa, and we detected deep probing death around implants and severe bleeding on probing, and the XR presented bone loss around some implants. We diagnosed the patient with chronic periodontitis, peri-implant mucositis, and peri-implantitis. Before getting to our treatment plan, let me jump to the end result of our treatment. Let me just say, it was a happy end. What would you do if your patient presented chronic periodontitis with peri-implant mucositis and peri-implantitis? What kind of treatment would you choose? For treating chronic periodontis, I believe we all choose scaling and root planing. This treatment, shown in the literature, predictable results in probing depth, bleeding on probing reduction, and gaining clinical attachment. But what kind of treatment would you propose to treat peri-implant disease? Would you choose titanium curettes alone, plastic ones, or would you add adjunctive therapy like systemic antibiotics? Or would you prefer to add local antibiotics? Shall we use powder air polishing? Shall we use photodynamic therapy? What is the right treatment in this situation? In order to get an answer to my dilemma, which treatment protocol is the best one for treating peri-implantitis? I searched in PubMed for studies and reviews that might be able to give me a clear view on this unclear topic. Here is some of the answers I got. Peri-implant mucositis has a cause-effect relationship between plaque accumulation and the development of inflammation. So that means by removing the plaque, we should solve the problem. But that's not so easy. Salvi et al. 2012 showed reversibility of experimental peri-implant mucositis, but did not always result in complete resolution of inflammation. What about adjunctive antiseptic to the mechanical debridement? Conventional non-surgical scaling and root planting with adjunctive antiseptic have been suggested to treat the peri-implants disease. So these adjunctive antiseptic treatments had shown low predictability, complete without resolution. So using chlorhexidine, iodine, or other antiseptic does not help to resolve the peri-implant mucositis or peri-implantitis. So maybe adjunctive antibiotics will help? Well, the literature shows that adding adjunctive antibiotics to treat the peri-implant diseases have no benefits and moreover will put the patient in a risk of developing resistance or anaphylactic shock. What about photodynamic therapy? Photodynamic therapy uses the soft laser to bomb the bacterial cells, and it sounds like a good idea. In fact, in 2014, Bassetti and Associates showed improvement in clinical outcomes of initial peri-implantitis using photodynamic therapy SRP, and self-performed plaque control up to 12 months. However, also here, complete resolution of mucosal inflammation was not achieved using this method. So what shall we do? Maybe we shall perform surgery? I wouldn't choose surgery as a first choice because Recent systematic review concluded there is no reliable evidence suggesting which surgical protocol therapy could be the most effective interventions for treating peri-implantitis. So what else can we use? There was a study conducted by Metro and Associates published in 2015. They have shown that non-surgical mechanical therapy of peri-implantitis with adjunctive repeated application of a diode laser yields significant clinical improvements. Actually, when you think about, diode laser characteristics give us exactly what we need. Yes, I agree it is. It is antibacterial, it is anticoagulant, it is a biostimulator, and it can penetrate by a thin tip to the deep pocket without hurting the surrounding tissue. Can you please explain a bit about this diode laser protocol that we have used? 
We have used the Metro protocol. I first performed mechanical debridement, then the pockets around the implants were rinsed with saline solution. A junctive diode laser was applied three times for 30 seconds in each pocket. This treatment was performed one time a week for three weeks. No antibiotic or antiseptic were applied. Are you curious about the results? In the next pictures, you can observe the healing process after each diode laser application. These pictures had been taken immediately after the first diode laser treatment. We can observe the massive bleeding and overgrowth of the gingiva. The next series of pictures presents the shrinkage process of the overgrowth peri-implant mucosa after each diode laser and curatage application. After 24 months, we can see clearly the results of our treatment. We can see the stability of the healthy peri-implant mucosa after diode application. This stability reflects in the absence of bleeding, no more deep probing depth, and no further bone loss. What are the disadvantages of this procedure? Well, it can create hot spots on the tip, and that can lead to thermal hit in the soft tissue. Nevertheless, we can control it. It is expensive, and not always aesthetically pleasing. It is important to understand that we are going to diagnose more and more peri-implant diseases in our clinic. In fact, Dirks and Thomasy show that the prevalence of peri-implant mucositis and peri-implantitis has been reported as 43%, and 22% respectively. And if peri-implantitis left untreated, it will lead to implant loss.